Outside of losing a finger, there is nothing worse than having a board wander or jump as you're sending it on its journey through the table saw. You'll damage your wood, create unequal dimensions, and if you're not lucky, get kickback that'll keep you from ever wanting to turn on your table saw again. I'm certainly not going to tell you that it is a safety requirement to use some sort of featherboard, but dense, hard wood will make you want to grab one. But it's not limited to thick hardwoods. Cutting thin material can be a serious problem as it bounces off the blade and chips and tears. Let me show you a jig that can fix both of these problems. As with a lot of my jigs, I'm going to show you my prototype as well as the final product. I did this because my final product tends to be an overkill and I know some people are just looking for a quick jig to make. Here I'm using an ordinary 2x4 and drilling a 1 inch hole. If you don't have a vertical clamp, I've made one you can take a look at. I'll have that link in the description. I'm not normally one that uses 2x4s in my jigs, but I needed a little more thickness for the inch I drilled out. The rest of the 2x4 I trimmed down to be the size of a 1x4. If you don't have a 2x4, you could always stack a few 2x4s together to do the same thing. With my sander, I rounded the protrusion, but honestly, you don't have to do it. It's important to cut the drill hole, which will house this one inch dowel. This dowel will serve as a rotating pivot for the featherboard. One part of the cylinder will need to be flat for the featherboard to be attached. I'm using my bandsaw jig for cutting dowels. If you're going to cut a dowel on a bandsaw, please watch my bandsaw jig video, as dowels can be dangerous to cut. That video will be in the description as well. As well as the rotating featherboard pivot, I needed a pivot on the table. A seesaw that will allow the jig the ability to be changed for each thickness. I can't tell you how thrilled I am using this bandsaw jig. Before I made it, putting a flat surface on a dowel could only be done on a belt sander, giving me an edge not entirely precise. I'm going to show you how I made an expansion bar. Honestly, when I first started this idea, I was only going to make a standard horizontal featherboard and use this video as a reference for future expansion bars. We'll want this expansion bar to fit perfectly inside of the track. The slot pivot will need to sit on the bar but not extrude past the table saw table. I used diagonals to find the center and measured 3 quarters of an inch from both sides. The idea was to have bolts on either side of the center bolt to use as guiding posts. I drilled and tapered all three holes to accept cone bolt heads. Because the expansion bar needs to expand, I used a coping saw to give it a slot. I centered and attached the pivot dowel to the top with carpet tape before finishing the holes on the drill press. Now we'll give the bolt a static pin which will keep it from spinning. I used a hacksaw to cut out a slot on the Phillips head. Because the bolt was so long, I used a few extra nuts and vice grips to steady the top. Afterwards, I added a 3 32nd stainless steel cotter pin, which I suggest as the stainless steel is a little stronger than the zinc counterpart. A little hot glue and it's set. Because my store-bought knob doesn't have a neck, I added washers. This is a demonstration to show how strong this expansion bar is. I can literally move the table saw with it in the slot. We'll drill out the hole for the fulcrum. I use the pivot as a pattern to mark the top before drilling it out.
After fitting it all together, I decided I wanted a cradle for the assembly to sit in. I used my bandsaw jig to cut triangles out to do this and hogood them on. When the glue was dry, I used my spindle sander to give it more of a rounded shape. I added a T-nut on the opposite end of the featherboard side and will use a bolt to put pressure on the featherboard side. Think of an overweight and skinny kid on a seesaw and reverse the effect. This was my idea. I made a generic square knob to see if the idea worked and put the rest of it together. To make the vertical feather board, I used my indexing box joint table saw sled to cut teeth out. That jig will also be in the description. I cut it off with a bandsaw before attaching it to the featherboard pivot with a couple number 10 screws. It wasn't until this point that I decided to add a horizontal featherboard to ride below the fulcrum. Like before, I used my jig to add teeth. So now the question here is, did it work? Actually very well. The featherboards were able to push the wood both down and against the fence. But I didn't like the angles of the teeth and I certainly hated the way it looked. With my newer model, I decided to make the overall jig much thinner. With a thicker center that would house two knobs instead of just the one with the two studs. I wanted the horizontal featherboard to be easier to see below the fulcrum and didn't want to have to thread it through three bolts. With my box joint jig, I made splines in the featherboard pivot and cut the walnut into splines before gluing them in. Using a one inch dowel as a placeholder. I clamped things up and gave it a few hours to dry. Instead of the triangles I made with the prototype, I decided I wanted to add a cove. It was one less glue up and made it feel less cluttered. With the horizontal featherboard, I made it so that the teeth were at an angle and glued in walnut strips that I had previously soaked in ammonia. In my last video, I used ammonia to soften the wood and decided to incorporate that into this project. When the glue dried, I cut it flat with a bandsaw. If you do this, be careful as the wood will want to split. I decided the best fulcrum I could make on this newer version would be one that contoured with the dowel pivot. This would allow tightening of the knobs, a better grip, and not put pressure on the knob stud as the previous one had done. I used a drill bit with teeth on the edges, used a hog out wood to widen the knob holes. If you don't have one, you can just use a drill bit. I transfer the curve from the one inch pivot and use a chisel to carefully chisel it out. If you decide to do this, take your time with it. Going fast will inevitably remove too much. With a little 150 sandpaper, I cleaned it up. I replaced the store knob with some custom checkered ones. I've made a video for these knobs, but it won't be up for a little bit, so check back later. I replaced the back knob with a thumb knob and then capped the other end with plastic to prevent it from damaging my horizontal featherboard. With my vertical featherboard, I angled the teeth as well before using dowels to attach it to a one inch dowel I made. So 
So what's the verdict on this version? Much better. It's far easier now to position my horizontal featherboard as I can see it. The thumb screw allows a little bit more fine tuning and the knobs give it a solid clamp. Overall, this was an excellent project and a jig you'll see me using in the future. But tell me, what do you think? Would you make the first or second one? Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram for teaser pictures on upcoming projects. If you have jigs you'd love to see made, leave a comment. No, that's impossible. And remember to keep making things.